please give a warm welcome to Commander Jean-Paul Chrétien. Triage means prioritizing medical care for the patients who most urgently need it and can benefit from it. The current triage technologies and, and procedures are inadequate for the large-scale incidents that medics may increasingly face, both on and off the battlefield. So I'm going to explain what the problems are with how triage is done today, and there are two big ones, and then introduce a new opportunity for you to help us modernize triage and save lives. So the first problem with how triage is done today is that we don't have a way of scaling the medic's hands-on assessment, and that's in the very initial stage of triage, which is called primary triage. When disaster strikes, minutes make the difference between life and death, whether that's an earthquake or a military operation, an attack on civilians. Some victims may have injuries that immediately threaten their life and that medics can treat on the spot. But what if there are many casualties and not enough responders to quickly figure out who needs those treatments? Moments count, but running from casualty to casualty, trying to find the ones who are most urgent, means that some may have to wait too long. And then the second problem with how triage is done today is that we don't know how to predict medical needs for a patient who appears to be stable. And this is in the next stage of triage, which is called secondary triage. It's a reassessment and monitoring. The standard vital signs actually don't help very much here. They barely budge after losing more than a liter of blood in controlled bleeding studies. And that's because the body can temporarily compensate until all of a sudden it can't anymore. And then it may be too late. And so here's a real life military example of how this can play out. You have multiple casualties, but there's not enough room on the medevac helicopter for all of them. So which ones get on the helicopter first? Only some of these casualties will get to surgery quickly, and the others are gonna have to wait in the field, maybe for hours. And the medic has essentially no tools to predict those clinical courses to help them make the right decision. We believe the core technologies exist to solve these triage problems, and that's why we've initiated the DARPA Triage Challenge. This is DARPA's newest prize challenge. It's in the vein of others you may have heard of, like the Subterranean Challenge, Robotics Challenge, the Autonomous Vehicle Challenges that Dr. Tompkins mentioned earlier. All of these spurred outside of the box thinking and drove their fields forward, and that's what we're hoping for with the DTC. It's a three-year effort. It's going to bring diverse communities together, and you can be a part of this to create new tools for triage and make it scalable and predictive. The foundations of the challenge are non-invasive sensors to capture physiological data from casualties, algorithms to identify novel injury signatures in those data, and communities, emergency responders, technology developers, you, uh, to make sure we develop tools that are operationally relevant. So here's the, the ultimate vision that inspires the effort. In primary triage, we could imagine someday autonomous platforms with different types of standoff sensors that capture physiological data from casualties and algorithms process those data to help the medics determine which ones they need to go and see and evaluate and treat first. And then for secondary triage, medics use non-invasive sensors. These are contact sensors that are placed on casualties which continually monitor physiology and algorithms process those data to help the medics anticipate medical needs. The challenge has two domains. For our primary triage competition, we'll create physical simulations of mass casualty scenes. And competitors, maybe you, will bring your platforms with standoff sensors and algorithms, and we'll score you on autonomous casualty assessment, how fast and how accurate. And then for secondary triage, We'll provide de-identified clinical data from DARPA's RITMO program that we announced a few months ago. You bring your algorithms, and we'll score you on prediction of life-saving interventions that actually occurred. And both competitions will become increasingly difficult over the three years. 
We'll have prizes for top performing teams with a total pool of more than $7 million, and we'll have tracks for both DARPA-funded and self-funded teams. Uh, for DARPA-funded teams, proposals are due in February, and for everyone, the challenge kicks off next fall. So please check out the website for more information. Join the challenge and help save lives. Thank you.